Hello everybody, in this chapter we will learn about diffuse lighting or diffuse reflections. In the previous chapter we understood what is basic lighting model and according to the basic lighting model the surface color which we remembered by a word called beads. So the surface color is a summation or the addition of emissive, ambient, diffuse, and specular. In this chapter, we will understand the diffuse component of the basic lighting model. If we understand the very basics of how we see something, we see something when the light is emitted by the light source, it hits the surface of the object and gets reflected and reaches to our eyes. So first, the light is emitted, reflected by the surface, and reaches to our eyes. We don't see the things that don't reflect the light or they completely absorb the light. Every surface to be visible has to have a property of reflecting the light. And diffuse reflection is the property of rough surfaces. An ideal rough surface is a surface that is rough enough to reflect the light in all the directions equally. So when a light falls on the surface, it is scattered in all the directions equally. If we see the magnification of the surface, it is that rough that it is reflecting the light in every direction. So this is the magnification of the small part of the rough surface. But in reality, there is no rough surface that equally reflects the light in all the directions. So scientist Lambert defined a law which is called as Lambert cosine law. And according to the Lambert cosine law, light is reflected off a surface based on the cosine fall off. So let's understand what does cosine fall off mean. So if this is the surface and this is the normal, and when the light hits the surface, it is reflected based on the cosine fall off. So visually, it will look something like this. Cosine fall off is the angle between the light vector and the surface normal. If this is the surface and this is the surface normal, and the light vector is the direction from the surface to the light source, and the angle between N and L, which is N stands for normal of the surface, and L stands for the light vector. And the angle between them is the cosine fall off. So this theta is the cosine fall off. Here is an image of Earth and Moon taken from Galileo spacecraft from a distance of about 6.2 million kilometers or 3.9 million miles. And what we see here is these are roughly the normal of the surface of Earth. And Sun is approximately 108 times bigger than Earth, so we will consider the light source as infinitely big light surface. And that's what we consider a directional light in the computer graphics. And we see here that the light that hits the surface heads on is more intense than the light that just glances the surface. And after this part, we stop seeing the earth. And if we overlap an image of a simplified surface over this earth, this is how the diffuse reflection looks like.
So the idea is to come up with a function that returns different intensities based on the alignment of the normal of the surface and the light vector. So if we consider this as a normal point of the surface and this is the direction of the light source, so L vector will be in the same direction. So the yellow arrow represents the normal and this pink arrow represents the light vector, the direction of the light from the surface of the object. When the light and the normal are aligned in the same direction, then the reflection is maximum. So if we consider one as maximum reflection, and for this point of the surface, the normal is directed in this direction, and the light source remains the same. So the theta and the angle between the normal and the light vector increases. And we see here the reflection is lesser. And for this point of the surface, this is the direction of the normal. And we see here the reflection becomes zero because the surface has become completely dark at this point. And clearly we can see that as the angle between the normal and the light vector increases, the value of the diffuse reflection decreases. So when n and L are the same, reflection is 1. We will keep the L vector same and the surface normal is changing and the reflection is less than 1 and more than 0. We will consider it 0.5 and for this case, the reflection becomes 0. Does this ring a bell? If you remember the chapter of dot and cross product of the vector, this is exactly what we saw as a dot product of two vectors. And here is the slide of from that chapter and we understood that for two normalized vector, the dot product is the cos theta of the angle between them. So the dot product of the same normalized vector is 1. The dot product of perpendicular n vectors is 0 and dot product of opposite n vectors is minus 1. And that is what we see here that when the light and the normal are in the same direction, the reflection is 1. And when they are perpendicular, the reflection is 0. And we don't want to calculate the opposite of N and L is because we don't get any light from below the surface or opposite side of the surface and the light source. Which takes us to the conclusion that the diffuse reflection is the dot product of vector normal and the light vector. And the light vector is the direction of the light source from the surface of the object or from the point of the object. And if the vectors are normalized, it is also the cosine of the theta between these two vectors or the angle between these two vectors. At this point, we have one component of our diffuse reflection. And we also understood that the value of the dot product goes from 1 to 0 to negative 1. And then it becomes 0 again and back to 1. And because we don't see the reflection from below the surface or the opposite side of the surface from the light source, that's why we only care about this part of the surface. So we care about the values between 0 to 1. And the value of the dot product of n dot l is from 1 to negative 1. So we will make an addition to this rule and we will care about only the values from 0 to 1. We will use max function and we will define two values inside it, which is 0 and n dot l. What max function does for us, it takes two scalar value as parameters and it returns whichever is the maximum amongst these two. If a is bigger than b, it will return a. If b is bigger than a, it will return b. 
So when we supply max 0 n dot L, it will return whichever is bigger. So when n dot L is 1, it will return 1. When n dot L is 0, it will return 0. And when n dot L is negative 1, we will get 0 because 0 is higher than negative 1. That is how we constrained the value between 0 to 1 for our result. So the formula for the diffuse reflection becomes max 0 comma n dot L. So we have derived this equation when there is only one light source and this is infinitely large and we consider that the surface is completely rough and we don't have any control of keeping the surface as rough or smooth. But when we talk about the computer graphics, there can be more than one lights in the scene. They can be of different intensities. The surface, the diffuse property of the surface might vary as well. So the equation of the diffuse reflection that we will use is So we don't have to get scared of this equation. This is a very simple equation. So the sign that you see here is a summation sign. It says that the summation or the addition of intensities of all the incident light source. So if there are five lights of one intensity, the summation of the intensities will become five. So it is that simple and we use i to 0 to i to n because there can be any number of lights in the scene. There can be no light or there can be multiple lights. And then this is the diffuse property of the surface which will vary from 0 to 1. The surface can be completely rough or diffuse or it can be completely smooth, that means there is no diffuse light. The surfaces that inhibit diffuse reflection or the Lambert cosine law are also called as Lambertian surfaces. So this diffuse here will define the property of the material that how diffuse it is. Then comes the attenuation. Attenuation is the property, it's the fall off of the light. In the previous example, when we saw the image of the Earth taken from Galileo spacecraft, light source is infinitely big. There is no fall off of the sunlight. And that is the nature exhibited by the directional lights. But when we talk about the point lights, there is a fall off of the light because there is an area up to which the point light emits the light. So this is the fall off property of the light. And the fourth component is the component that we discussed, which is max 0 comma n dot L, where n is the normal vector and L is the light vector. n and L are both the directions away from the surface. So this becomes the equation of our diffuse reflection. And this is the equation we will use in our shader when we will write the Lambertian diffuse reflection. And that is it for this chapter. In the next chapter, we will take our normal shader, we will add the diffuse reflection property in it, and we will see the surfaces emitting diffuse reflection. Thank you so much for listening.